Hello everyone, Ezekiel O'Callaghan with Raptor Chatter here, here to talk about what happened for paleontology in January 2019. The duck-billed platypus is famously bizarre for its combination of adaptations not seen elsewhere in nature. However, it does have at least one case of similar adaptations happening through convergent evolution. Eret Morhippus caroldongi was a species of early marine reptile of the group Hupasuchia, which is closely related to the first ichthyosaurs. Eret Morhippus had a wide mouth, much like a duck's bill, and was similar in size to the platypus, being a little bit under a meter. Eret Morhippus also had very small eyes, similar to that of a platypus. And as platypus don't use their eyes when they're hunting, it stands to reason that Eret Morhippus also didn't use its eyes. Although we don't know what senses Eret Morhippus used when hunting, the combination of traits being so similar to that of a platypus is a great example of convergent evolution, where evolutionary pressures select similar traits in different species that aren't closely related. The extinction of the Australian megafauna is the most recent of the extinctions that happened at the end of the Pleistocene that focused on the large mammals that dominated the period. The Australian extinction being the most recent is very important for us to study so that we can understand potentially why all the other extinctions also happened and potentially why they happened earlier. This study sought to find out if it was due to climate change. As it was the end of the ice age, many animals that were adapted to the colder climates may not have been ready for such a drastic change in the climate. One of the most recent studies on this extinction indicates that this extinction didn't happen due to climate change, but rather human arrival on the continent. And so this means that the large extinctions of things like mammoths in the northern hemisphere, or species like Megalania or the giant wombats in Australia, isn't due to climate change, but rather directly due to human arrival and competition and or hunting. And so that doesn't mean we shouldn't address climate change now, but that we already have had a major impact in the life around the world. Before the closing of the Isthmus of Panama, which joined the North and South American continents, warm water was able to flow around the world much more rapidly, allowing large species like Cacaracles megalodon to hunt the ocean. However, they weren't the only large oceanic predators during this time. Large predatory whale species like the genus Leviathan hunted the oceans, particularly preying upon the large baleen whales of the time. These species were previously believed to be somewhat limited. However, new finds coming from Argentina show that they were quite extensively spread across the Southern Hemisphere. While these species aren't with us today, likely due to competition with newly evolved pilot whales and orcas, it does show that they were quite successful in their own right, despite being newer to science than Megalodon. Coolindidromius is the earliest known feathered dinosaur. An Ornithischian, it was the first feathered dinosaur to be found coming from the more herbivorous branch of the dinosaur tree. It had been believed to have been from either the late Jurassic or early Cretaceous, which would put it about in line with most of the other species we see with feathers, such as Microraptor or even Archaeopteryx. A new study on the matrix, the rock surrounding the fossils, has shown that it's actually older than that pushing back to the middle Jurassic. This find makes it slightly more likely that the ancestor to all dinosaurs had feathers, which means potentially all of its descendants, all dinosaurs, may have had them. However, more evidence will be needed, such as fossils showing feathers coming from the Triassic period or on a very, very primitive dinosaur. Smock wawalesi may look like a dinosaur, but it's actually much more closely related to the crocodiles. However, it may have eaten like a very famous dinosaur, specifically Tyrannosaurus rex. Tyrannosaurus rex broke bones and crushed them with its large, powerful teeth. These became incorporated into its coprolites, its fossilized dung. Through this dung, we can identify Tyrannosaurus rex droppings because of the crushed bone inside. Fossil coprolites from the same time period as smog have also been found with the same kind of crushed bone inside. Also inside the coprolites were individual teeth from smock, which likely broke off during feeding. Additionally, there were some fossils which were regurgitates, meaning it vomited it back up, kind of like owls do with pellets 
when they swallow their prey whole, meaning that this behavior that we're seeing in modern day species may date back as far as the Triassic period, when Smok lived over 200 million years ago. Understanding how life began to walk is key for understanding how life diversified once it reached land. For a better understanding of this, scientists looked at a very basal and primitive member of the amniotes, Orobates pabsti. The amniotes would eventually evolve into both the reptiles and the mammals, however this was the group that unified them both before they diversified. Understanding how a genus like Orobates may have walked can help us understand what made the reptiles and the mammals so different. Orobates was chosen for the study because it has both fossilized footprints and full skeletons so that we can make sure we are having as much accurate data as possible. The scientists put the parameters for the lengths of the bones of Orobates into a computer and gave them many different conditions so that they could try and understand what sort of range of walking it likely had. And so this is down to things like how much cartilage helps cushion the joints, because that will give different amounts of bending being available. As a control, species like caiman were also put into the system to see if the computer could match their gait as it is known as they are living today. Through this, the scientists were able to find a fairly accurate representation of what Orobates' gait would have been like. Specifically, how it would have had a gait very similar to that of a caiman's. And while this seems somewhat minor, this kind of more advanced high walking gait is different than that of a lizard, where a lizard would still be dragging its tail. This type of gait wasn't expected to have evolved so early in the amniote line, and can help shape our understanding of why the reptiles and the mammals began to split so quickly after Orobates. Sue the T-Rex is the most complete and potentially largest Tyrannosaurus rex ever found. And the rock that it was found in has been in the storage room of Chicago's Field Museum for years. This year, scientists have been able to go through the rock and find more details about the environment in which Sue lived. Sue had been believed to have died in what was a small lake. However, it seems that lake had at least some connection to the ocean. This is because the most recent study of the matrix found shark teeth inside the rock. These teeth resemble the ship from the arcade game Galaga, and so the species has been named Galagodon nordquiste. Based on the shape of the teeth, Galagodon was likely related to the modern day bamboo sharks, which today live in Southeast Pacific and Indian Oceans, a far cry from South Dakota, where Sue was found. South Dakota 66 million years ago was on the coast of an inland sea, and a lot more tropical than it is today. As these are oceanic sharks, it helps us to understand a little bit more about the environment in South Dakota and how the lake that Sue was found in was at least occasionally connected to the ocean in tropical South Dakota 66 million years ago. Hello everyone, thanks for watching. I really appreciate the views. We got a lot of new viewership, uh, new subs last month. Really excited to keep putting out content for you guys. This was a shorter month. I will say that is in part due to the government shutdown as a lot of the researchers haven't been able to work. So now that that's over, we should start getting a lot more papers coming out. As for the special announcement that we did mention, it's been delayed a little bit, but it will be coming soon. So sorry if you were really excited for it, but it is coming still. And as always, remember, take care, be safe, don't go extinct.